A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, then you are a king. Jesus answered, you say I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. When you say the word king, various images and thoughts may come to mind. Images of wealth, power, honor, splendor, influence, images of grand palaces and lavish parties. The full title of today's celebration is Our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. King of the Universe. Well, that would certainly include splendor, and you cannot get any grander than stars and nebulae and far-off wonders that the Hubble telescope has revealed to us over the years. Yet Jesus is surprising, to say the least. Apparently, to his divine mind, the wealth and wonder and grandeur of the universe would mean nothing without you. And so this king of the universe became a different kind of king entirely. In today's gospel passage, we meet Pontius Pilate, a man who was used to having people bow and scrape before him. He was, after all, representing Caesar and the Senate and the people of Rome. So imagine his surprise, and perhaps a bit of wonder, when this scruffy, itinerant Jewish preacher was brought before him, roughed up by the religious authorities, sweaty, dirty, a bit bloody perhaps. There he stood, apparently unimpressed by Roman symbols and Roman representatives. The passage we heard today regarding Pilate's interrogation of Jesus ends, unfortunately, right before Pilate cynically asks one of the most powerful questions in all of Scripture. What is truth? My dear Pilate, the answer is not what, but a who. Jesus, the King, is truth itself. The truth of God wrapped in human flesh so that all humanity could more easily see and hear, touch and be touched and challenged by him. Who is the King that we honor today? Well, not a King of this world. Jesus makes this quite clear to Pilate when he says, my kingdom is not here. No, not here. Amid violence and bloodshed and injustice and the petty power plays of the rulers of this world, resulting in the suffering of the innocent 
and truth being discarded into the trash heap of politics in favor of empty words that tickle the ears and deaden the heart. So then, what kind of king do we have? We have a king robed in the humility of the fragile, tender flesh of a newborn baby boy, born into both vulnerability and approachability. We have a king robed in power that silenced wind and waves and demonic powers, who made blind eyes see, deaf ears open, crippled limbs strong, and the dead rise to life renewed. A king robed in a gentleness which called sinners back to true freedom and embraced squirming, trusting children. We have a king robed in wisdom who taught the ignorant of God's love while urging the self-righteous to take up the humility of servanthood. A king robed in blood and tears whose suffering was a burden of love. We have a king robed in life and death whose very death gives life, and who, as the book of Revelation proclaims, loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. One of my absolute favorite spiritual writers is the 14th century mystic Lady Julian of Norwich. Not only was she the first woman to write a book in English, but she was an anchorite. She lived in two rooms that were built onto the church of St. Julian in the village of Norwich, England. There were two windows in her dwelling. One window opened out into the church so she could hear mass and receive communion. The other window opened out into the world where people could come and bring her food or seek her spiritual direction. She was allowed one servant to take care of her personal needs, and she was allowed a cat to keep the mouse population down. On Sunday, May the 8th, the year 1373, when she was 31 years old, she had what sounds very much like a near-death experience. She was terribly ill, so ill, in fact, that they called the priest to come and anoint her. As he held out the crucifix to her, she was given what she called 16 showings or revelations of divine love. In one of these, she writes, then our good Lord put this question to me. Are you really pleased that I suffered for you? I said, yes, good Lord, all my thanks to you. Yes, good Lord, blessed may you be. Then Jesus, our good Lord, said, If you are satisfied, I am satisfied. It is a joy, a bliss, an endless delight to me that I ever suffered my passion for you. And if I could suffer more, I would suffer more. She later comments on Jesus' last statement. And in these words, if I could suffer more, I would suffer more, I truly saw, as often as he could die, so often would he have died, and love would never let him rest until he had done it. And I contemplated with great diligence to know how often he would die if he could. And in truth, the number so far exceeded my understanding and intelligence that my reason had not leave or power to comprehend or accept it. To die so often for my love that the number goes beyond created reason is the greatest offer our Lord God could make to man's soul as I see it. This is then, my brothers and sisters, this is our King. 
not some petty potentate who demands fearful kowtowing before him, but a king of humility and power, gentleness and vulnerability, whose death on our behalf was a burden of pure love. And because of his sacrifice, you and I become the crown of this king of the universe. We are signs of his kingship when we embrace him and his will for us with abandonment and trust. As his crown, his crowning achievement, we are called to make his presence a reality to all who come into our life, to dispel the darkness with his light, to dispel fear with faith and hope, dispel the doubts of human opinion with the truth of Jesus Christ, who announces in the book of Revelation, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. To that let us all proclaim, Amen. Come, King Jesus, come. And may God grant you his peace. Oh, my God.